check the sound on stream. I am live now, so if you click on the link. Test. You let me know if it works or not. Seems to be fine on my side. Um, it's not very loud, is it? Can you compare yeah. it to my own voice? Is it very, way louder or it's more silent? I can adjust my own voice. Um, I think your general audio should just be a little higher. Okay, I put my general to the max. I cannot raise it more, but I lowered my own by 50%. Can you compare it now? How does it compare? That's one, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three. It seems like we're on the same level, it's, but it's still a bit, bit quiet. Mm, Julian? What's up? Say something. Hello. Hello, hello. How do we compare? Hello. Julian. Another flop. So how do we compare? Same level or good? Um, I guess same level, but the general audio is very soft. then uh, can you say something hello is it any more loud than it was any louder um, it seems to be the same the same okay so I can lower my speakers I raised slightly more this part but now it's maximum let me see maybe I can add a filter in PC add gain uh, yeah um, what about now I raised my own volume and I raised your volume I added a filter for gain does it work can you say something test test Yeah, it's, I think it's much better. Maybe you're a bit a bit quieter than us. Okay. Uh, I leave mine to the original and I will slightly lower you. Uh, so one more test. How do we compare you? Can you say something? Hello. Test. Uh, same level. You're louder. Am, am I louder? I guess same level. It's okay, I guess. Kind of, yeah. Okay. Uh, that's good. Uh, I think it's slightly more, so I'll reduce it to ten. But it should be good. Just let me know if it is an issue, and we'll adjust. But I think we can start now. So sound is nice, right? Everything can, everyone can be heard properly. Both me and the people talking. Can uh, people listening confirm? Dave94 or Flubberflub, could you confirm it's working fine? Awesome. In that case, let's get started. So this will be semi-educational, semi-lesson, semi-real uh, interview, example, mock interview. Nothing to be worried, uh, nothing to worry about. It's just 
a simulation and nobody cares about the actual outcome or how you do it just the points um, to cover before getting into an actual job interview so it's better to learn from mistakes of others and it's better to know what to expect than to just go into the unknown so um i guess uh, uh, the way this will be structured is that um we'll try to divide this into sections um uh, so basically those sections if there will be four parts or five parts so uh first part it always starts the interview starts with a company intro then part two is you tell about yourself about your character then part three is they ask you questions tech questions uh, theory and then part four is problem solving and then part five is those final questions if you have questions about the company about the benefits and finally about the salary and after the interview stuff that you should do and before the interview stuff that you should do to prepare for it uh, and each of those sections uh, except the first and the last will be followed about things that you should be doing and things that you should avoid doing and i'll give a link to the slides because it's probably easier to follow like that uh, before we start let's look at your cv and the requirements uh, sorry for the font i don't have word anyways uh, the company is internationally known been on market for more than 20 years. The company helps building software for manufacturing companies is about 200 employees and they're looking for a junior developer for their 10 man team. So this is a good description, a, a good company for starters. Probably for starters, it's likely better to start smaller. Um, Julian, do you have thoughts on the size of a company in correlation to your experience? Does size matter and what should a junior developer ideally look for or is it irrelevant? That's a very good question. Um, I do think that the size matters. Um, but then again, employees, does this mean 200 software engineers or 200 employees? We need some more information about the company itself, about the market it operates in and so on. Uh, right, but in general, let's say it's 200 engineers. Right, that does matter. Um, I do think that the more engineers, the higher the level. But I'm not sure. What is your opinion? Mm, for me, I personally think that when you're working in a smaller company, uh, People are usually closer together, more tightly knit, and uh, the learning experience altogether feels a bit better as you learn, as you build friendships. But that was my experience for my second or and first workplaces that it's not just about work, it's also closer together. Uh, and therefore, usually, uh, more stuff that you have to do like more different kinds of things that you have to work with because being a small company means that there isn't a, like um, a dedicated team for a certain aspect of software development usually uh, the whole team does everything by itself and sometimes even one person is just a full stack of everything right so um in a large company, you still have that um, a very informal contact, but only within your own team. But you still have that, in my opinion. Right. Uh, of course you do. Uh, the benefits of bigger companies that the projects are likely to be more bigger in scale, more serious, more long term. But at the same time, there's also slightly less room to make mistakes and to be uh, creative introducing your own ideas because those kind of projects tend to already follow some 
predetermined structure. Um, but in a big sense, it doesn't matter that much. So this shouldn't be a factor that influences your choice. The factor should be what they are looking for and how other things about the actual job sound like. So this is not the most relevant part about the position. So let's continue reading on. Company name is not mentioned. Those are such an info highlighted about the company. That's very weird. Actually, that is rare. Um, it's not. Um, if this is gathered through um, a uh, job, how do you call that? A uh, um, okay. Bounty hunter. Uh, right, right. The hunter. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's the case here. Exactly. I guess that's why it's this is totally normal. And, okay. Yep. Uh, in my country, it's quite mm, rare to have such a description. It's very often written what the company is and actually as a law we have a requirement to put in a salary range as well it's mandatory okay so yeah the reason for this is that um they obviously don't want you to contact the company directly mm -hmm. um also about the salary what's uh, quite nice about it is that um, they will bargain for you um because most developers mm -hmm. are quite bad at bargaining and they offer that for you and they will just get a percentage of your um, eventual month yeah. salary so they actually get money the higher you get paid yeah. so it, it's really good for software engineers who don't who aren't good at bargaining themselves yeah i recommend it okay let's continue so never mind that sounds good uh for experience they say they're looking for c sharp and net and they accept a fresh graduate as well. What this means basically is that they don't have much expectations from you. They just expect you to, I guess, know the fundamentals and uh, have an idea about different concepts, but they don't require you to be good at it. Just have dabbled with those kind of things and that's all. Um, that sounds great. Yeah, so which which sounds great. They, because sometimes they're crazy work descriptions that sound like looking for an intern with two years of experience in .NET, which is what? Yep. <laughs> That's not an intern. That's a genius. Okay. It... Uh, also, the, it, it says uh, um, looking for people who have ex some experience with C Sharp and .NET, fresh graduates as well. Okay. Uh, also, internship or junior is important distinction. Uh, internship, the only difference is, is probably that internships are sometimes unpaid. That's on a rare end these days, but it happens. But obviously this is not the case. Uh, so application workflow uh, test can be completed at home. Two interviews, one with HR and another one that is more technical. Uh, so the kind of application workflow that I've been through uh, varied a lot. Sometimes it's just one interview and you have everything during that interview. Sometimes it starts with a phone interview where they basically give you a test for thinking. Uh, for thinking, um, for, for seeing how you think on the spot. What's your logical thinking? How, how can you solve problems? What, how do you think? And, and at the same time, just touch some of the fundamentals of programming on top. Uh, so uh, that's one. Or sometimes it's multi-stage interview at the same place. Uh, for example, first interview would be technical. Second interview would be with an HR, with the boss. And third interview would be, I don't know, a personality test. So it, it varies a lot on the company. And this is just another format. Often, instead of a test, they just give you a homework that you need to do in a week or two. That is the most yeah. common test. I actually had to do an assessment there, which was quite scary. Yeah. Uh, tell us about your assessment short. Um... Yeah, so um, I had to need uh, two appointments. One was an interview, um, 
and then the second appointment was the day after and I had to do an actual assessment there which was uh, some sort of file parser and they gave me three hours and I could use Google um, I could basically do anything I want but I had to be able to explain my code and I did not even finish the actual assessment not even close to finishing and the, go the code itself was not um, very qualitative, but I was able to explain my code and that was good enough for them. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, the thing about those interviews, usually they don't even expect you to finish anything. They just want to see the quality of code that you write, how you write it, what's your flow of work, uh, how do you react, uh, what do you do when you are stuck? And if you are able to get uh, around uh, being stuck, stuck, and if you're able to learn on the spot, learn fast and look for information that you don't know about. Uh, Googling during uh, those uh, coding interviews, code like problem solving is allowed unless you are just whiteboarding and writing pseudocode. Um, so yeah, in fact, uh, Go on. Google is a very essential skill. So it's also, um, from a company's perspective, very important to test your Googling skills. Yeah. In fact, I was even asked what I Googled. So, yeah, that's true. Next, uh, key competencies they require. So now actual skills, experience in C sharp programming, not mentioned to what extent, uh, it's vague and it varies a lot, so it's hard to say. Familiarity with .NET Framework, that basically doesn't mean much difference from C-sharp programming, unless, yeah, that doesn't mean much yet. Know how to use Visual Studio, that still is on the same set of skills. Knowledge of SQL databases, um, this now means that you should know how to do basic curing, basic insert, like basic CRUD with SQL, and that you should know basic database design. Uh, driving license of category B. That's that's an, a, a weird one, driving license. Um, if you are going to work for customers directly, you might need it. It depends on the company. We haven't really had a description of the company, but say that the comp that you have to implement software for a company and make customized software. In that case, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, but is it rare to see it? Is it common? No, not at all. Okay, for for me, I think it's five percent in in the job posts right okay yeah five percent but i don't say that's rare okay it's common okay uh required soft skills good problem solving skills analytical thinking good at teamwork ability to be productive while working from home office uh all the usual stuff nothing special here this this literally applies to everything uh, advantages if you have degree in computer science, experience in ASP.NET and VC development, experience in JavaScript, HTML, CSS, software testing experience, version control systems, uh, familiarity with Atlassian products and ticketing system, CI, CD development methods. Okay, so from all those technologies that I stick out, now I can tell a lot what they expect, what you will be working on. So. Basically, uh, degree doesn't matter much. I, it is a slight benefit, but nothing uh, breaking if you don't have it. Um, MVC means that you basically uh, be working f full stack to some extent, uh, that you will both be making uh, client applications using MVC, using Razor pages and also some sort of services. It, it looks like full stack to me because JavaScript is mentioned, HTML, CSS, ASP.NET, MVC. So it's, it's 
it sounds like a full stack job. Uh, it's good that they mention testing because, uh, yeah, because it's an important skill to practice. And there are many companies that don't do that, that don't do automated testing. Uh, so it's good that they mentioned it. Uh, version control systems. Now this one I don't like because to me Mercurial and Tortoise are a yellow flag. They're quite old systems. So this means that you'll be working on some, some old project because I don't think it makes sense to have a project that was, uh, that is new and is not on Git or, or T TFS. Basically, those are the two major options, uh, Tortoise, Mercurial, probably alternatives, but it's, from my experience, more often on old companies, on, on old projects than new projects. Atlassian projects, products means that probably you'll be working with Jira or Bitbucket. And, uh, CI, CD, or both, or both, <laughs> and CI, CD means it's good. It means that you have a pipeline uh, that you want to automate stuff that you don't do manual deployment. So that, that is also good. Overall, I think this is a good, a good job. It sounds good because all those skills, they don't require you to know in advance. So if your, um, salary that you want and the skill and character that you show matches what they need, they will get you. So being great at it is not something they expect from you right away. They just want you to be willing to learn and show that you are interested and want to do what they ask you to. All right. So now that you, we know what the job is and talked about those things, let's start with the interview itself. So what should you do before the interview, which you already did by writing that thing, basically check about the company. You cannot check about the company. Uh, I don't know if they will give you the name of the company after the test or how will that work? But I, I still imagine that you should have some way of investigating about the company. You just, um, you often hear it before the interview, mm -hmm. as far as I understand. Um, yeah. From because what you, I've from what I've read, they've mentioned that after passing the first test, mm -hmm. uh, they will tell you more about the company and also prepare you more for the interview with the line manager there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then you can do the investigation. So, um, after that test, um, and based on the requirements, it's good that they didn't, uh, mention experience. Overall, I think the job description sounds reasonable. It doesn't really have anything that I would be afraid of. Uh, the only thing that I didn't like that much was uh, the use of uh, Tortoise or Mercurial because it's, to me, sounds a bit old, but it's still usable. So it's definitely not a bad thing. It's just not a great thing, not Git. So. That's my only concern. Um, feedback, if, if, if you're applying to a local company, people's feedback, maybe, I don't know, uh, if you know the company's name, you can look at feedback at, com at, at the comments. Uh, we have those websites in Lithuania that you can look up companies rating and, and stuff like that. Uh, just to indicate, again, it shouldn't be uh, uh, something determining. Uh, decisive, it shouldn't be that decisive factor, just something that you can refer to. And if you have options, choices, it, it could be one extra um, point to the company 
choose one. And uh, again, uh, before you go, you should learn about the average sal salary for the position and the experience that you're looking for and not the average, better to go for a median. And a median means from lowest to highest, you take the middle salary, the middle number. So not the average number, but basically the most common number per se. So does your recruiter bargain for you? But like, like you said, this, this kind of a job is from a bounty, uh, from, from jobs hunter. So that is not your concern in this case. Um, now, before you go, you should learn and read and practice as much as you can for problem solving their websites like Exorcism.io or Advent of Code. And you shouldn't focus on difficult problems. You should try solving those easy problems because that's most likely what's going to be given to you. Unless easy problems are too easy for you, then you can practice more difficult ones. But if, if you haven't done problem solving before, I recommend not delving into medium or difficult problems. And lastly, practice. Think uh, about what could they say. Uh, be prepared to answer different questions and practice the interview. Simulate it in your head. Practice in front of mirror. Don't expect to succeed right away. Don't expect to get the job. Just Take it as an opportunity and be happy if you succeed, but don't be too disappointed if you don't. Take the most out of it and take it as a learning experience in any case. And now the actual interview. So it all starts from company intro. Your test part, we skipped 